Good evening. How's everybody doing? We're going to start with a uh, song. I, I don't know how many times we've done it here. I think the praise band's done it. Um, we haven't. I haven't. But anyway, Cornerstone is a song. I think if you know it, sing along. If you don't know it, sing along. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust in sweetest rain, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. When darkness seems to hide his face, Rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anger holds within the veil Christ alone, cornerstone Weak made strong in Savior's love through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When He shall come with trumpet sound, and may I then in Him be found, just in His righteousness alone. All is stand before the throne Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong In Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord Lord of all Lord Well, good evening. Welcome to worship. Pastor Tom is taking his last little rest before jumping into the fall season with confirmation class, getting some things tidied up there. Um, and this gives Dave next week and, and me this week a chance to get off the bench anyway. Um, so tonight's message is going a little later. We'll explore the relationship between faith and works. Now, wouldn't it be nice if all it took was belief and we could kick back and be saved. Well, not quite that easy. Uh, any highlights for today? I, I, know that, I know that we saw Dennis out on the bike trail, so that was a highlight. Um, yes? Ooh, awesome, right. happy anniversary. Cool. Well, we're celebrating. Happy anniversary to you. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to Happy anniversary to you. All right. Cool. All right. Let's stand and share the peace. Or shalom, however you'd like.
All right, let's um, remain standing, as long as you're standing, and um, we'll sing a song. Yes? Yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. was grace that taught my heart to hear and grace my fear released how precious did that grace appear the hour I first my chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbears to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever. will be forever mine you'll be forever mine heavenly father you are an awesome god the majesty of your creation every minute detail the plans you have for each and every one of us the love you have shown us through your Son. But Lord, we come with heavy hearts, weighed down by sin. Things we have done or left undone. Things we have said or left unsaid. We have sinned against you and against others. Let us confess those things now in the silence.
thank you, Lord, for the life-changing power of forgiveness. Our sins are forgiven. You wipe clean our slate. Send us out sharing your love and spreading your word, inspired to do good works, into our community and beyond. In our risen Savior, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We join in ancient words to prepare our hearts for the scripture. In the past number of weeks, Pastor Tom spoke on the theme of doing life as Christians. He looked to the early church, as written in Acts 2, to see how they were living out their faith in the newly forming church. He told of the disciples being sent out, and then the 72, how they devoted themselves to prayer, unending prayer over all things, how they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the New Testament ink hardly dry on paper, and how they shared everything they had to everyone in need. It sounds like these early Christians were busy doing. Now, didn't Paul write about faith and works in his letter to the church in Ephesus? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast as written in Ephesians 2. Taken by itself, this verse makes it sound as though we can kick back, believe, and be saved. But this is not quite the case. If we continue on to verse 10, we read, For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. And further, James 2, 26, is a verse often misunderstood. It states, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. This verse in James seems to contradict what Paul had written and even Jesus' teaching, salvation by grace alone. Again, we need to read further to see James' point that genuine faith is accompanied by corresponding actions Faith must be demonstrated. A person is justified by works for usefulness on earth. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, there's a summary of some big names from the Old Testament. Even though we know these greats for the actions they carried out, this chapter emphasizes their strong faith that led to these actions. In Hebrews 11, 4 through 7, it reads, by faith, Abel offered to God more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him, for it was attested before he was taken, that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. 
For whoever would approach God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Paul continues on about the faith of Abraham, Moses, and many others, ending with the chapter stating that though they were commended for their faith, they did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better. Let's take a peek at this video clip debunking the claim that salvation can be earned. How you doing? That's good. Now let's get right to the point because there's a lot to unpack. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, I paraphrase for brevity. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me, Did we not prophesy in your name or cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Then Jesus will say, Depart from me. I never knew you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second here. Seems pretty harsh. I mean, where's the happy-go-lucky, cheek-turning, white conservative lamb holding everybody's okay genie in a bottle Jesus we slap on our greeting cards on Christmas and Easter? What in the world is going on here? Why does he say depart from me when they did all these amazing things in his name? And why won't everyone who says, Lord, Lord, enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, the answer is found in that question, my friends, wrapped up in a riddle, spun as a metaphor and delivered here today forthwith at breakneck speed. Lots of people think that salvation depends on their good deeds outweighing their bad deeds. Like for some reason, God will overlook the 1,001 bad things you did if for some reason and somehow you did 1,002 good things. A lot of other people know they haven't done enough good things, so they think if they simply say a prayer, walk down an aisle when emotional music is playing, and say four hallelujahs after they do a bad thing, then, well, hey, God will like them a little more for their religious behavior, forget about all their sins, and open the pearly gates. Well, both of these views, which are really the same view, is exactly what's being addressed in our Matt 7 patches. Look at it. These people that called to Jesus said, did we not prophesy? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not do mighty works? We, 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 all the way home. You see that? The pronoun is wrong, baby. And Jesus is letting them know that. He's saying there ain't no we when it comes to salvation from the wrath of God. There's only I. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the resurrection of life. I am the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. According to Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Salvation from what? Well, from the wrath of God, from spending eternity in a place called hell, which I get nobody likes to talk about these days, but hey, we got to say it like it is, friendo. And belief is not just a mental affirmation of the facts. No, 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 no. It's placing your complete trust in the person and finished work of Jesus. That means salvation has nothing to do with our righteousness. Because according to Romans 3.10, none is righteous, no, not one. And in case that isn't clear enough, Isaiah 64.6 6 says all our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. Ephesians 2.8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works. Well, okay, let's hammer this home. In Luke 18, two men went into the temple to pray, and one said, I'm glad I'm not like those sinners who do worse things than me. I mean, I do all kinds of good things that people see, like smiling and saying pious things and praying. I go to church, I even give money and tithe, I even fast. All in all, I'm a pretty good guy, right? The other guy wouldn't even lift up his eyes. He beat on his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus said, it's that guy, the chess beater, who went away justified. Then a rich dude comes up to Jesus and asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Notice the pronoun. After some chit-chat, the rich man walked away sad because he realized he couldn't earn, buy, or achieve eternal life his way. People then ask Jesus, well, who can be saved then? To which Jesus replies, well, there's nothing anybody can do to inherit eternal life. It's impossible. Salvation is only possible if God does something. And what God did is send his only begotten son into the world so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So let me ask you, are you the first dude in the temple, the rich man who walks away sad, the religious dude who present all the great things that they've done? Or do you agree with God that you are a sinner in need of a savior who cries out for mercy and puts your trust in the saving work of Jesus? Time to do some serious soteriological soul searching seeking scripture sufficient solution, I'd say. Because this idea that we can do good things to gain God's grace or inherit eternal life by our own merit, or that our salvation is earned by walking down an aisle or any other way, has been debunked. Adios. Yeah, there'll be a quiz afterwards. No. So if it's all about faith, what's the purpose of works in a Christian life? For those who believe in Jesus Christ, their response to salvation is obedience. Those who believe in God choose to obey his commands. After five and a half years in Taekwondo, Matt, Bailey, and I knew a thing or two about obedience and obeying commands. It was either that or an extra helping of push-ups, sit-ups, or other grueling tasks. Back to faith. Submitting to the Lord, our hearts are changed. Our desires mimic his desires. Our deeds reflect 
that the change that he makes in us. In Matthew and elsewhere, we read of our deeds compared to fruit. The follower of Christ who is obedient, submissive, and committed to God's way of doing things will naturally bear good fruit in their lives that will be evidence for others to see. In the book of John, Jesus says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. In Galatians, Paul wrote of the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How have I seen faith influence the actions in my own life bearing these fruits? Now, even though I grew up going to church and getting confirmed, I knew of God, but for many years I didn't know God. Following the pattern of so many after confirmation, seeing that chapter as done, I only attended church from time to time, and only more regularly when my own children were in Sunday school. Until almost 40, a nice biblical number there, uh, if you had told me that I would be in front of church giving a sermon or writing the prayers, I would have called you crazy. I would never, I've never been big into reading, never was a writer, and public speaking scared me to death. Words were not my thing. On top of that, the pages of my Sunday school issue, Good News Bible, had only seen the light of day a handful of times. Moving to this little country church that my mom reminisces our old church was like when she was a girl. Faith finally clicked. I heard his knock. You see me run around before church and praying up at the lectern. Not to get a prayers badge for my sash or to compete with Mary for most assists. Never like to read or write, he said. Curiosity and an urge to know God more fully helped me through the whole Bible a couple of times now. Though my, I may have propped my eyes open for numbers and Deuteronomy, you know. Filling part of Justine's role as high school discipleship leader took a pretty big nudge. Feeling the weight of the responsibility, the faith life of these youth looking to me for guidance. Could I keep their attention, knowing what to answer, to how to answer their questions? Most importantly, to nurture their growing faith that they would focus not on me and my shortcomings, but look to the Lord. Oh, wait. Uh, helping to chaperone mission trips, starting with Matt's first trip, and now a couple later, off of work for a week at a time. I wouldn't call those trips a vacation, but so worth the relationship building, both in getting to know our students on the trip and those from other churches, but also the people that we were serving, meeting like Miss Vivian at Project Here in Nashville, talking with her through a whole lunch break about how she went to nursing school midlife and went on to serve as a hospice nurse and how she cares for her grandchildren. It has been a blessing to see the Holy Spirit in action as we push beyond our normal day to day. All this I do in faith, open to the task God lays before me. And through this willingness, God will use me, can use me, to inspire others, to lift others up, to be a mentor and a role model. We do not do works to gain God's grace or earn his salvation, but because of God's grace and mercy, we are compelled to do works. Why are good works so important to faith? Good works make our faith meaningful, benefiting ourselves and those around us. Good works show obedience and love. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commands. Good works have an impact on others. Through our actions, we have the opportunity to be a light in the world. Good works fulfill the Great Commission. In Matthew 28, Jesus instructed his disciples to make disciples of all nations. This involves not only sharing the gospel, but also teaching them to obey all he commanded. Good works glorify God. When we engage in acts of love, mercy, justice, and kindness, we reflect the attributes of God himself. 
good works strengthen our faith. When we see the positive outcomes of our actions and experience the joy of helping others, it can deepen our understanding of God's love. Though we are saved by grace through faith, we live out and show our faith to others through our works, letting our light so shine that others see the love of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are ever so thankful that your salvation is given by Jesus' death and resurrection. Sinful as we are before you, a righteous and just God, we could never earn it by our own actions. Having received your gift, set free from the grip of sin in our lives, send us out to do great things in your name, a reflection of your love, your light in this world. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join in the message song, In Christ Alone. Please stand as you're able. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone is solid ground. Froom to the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. What fears are still when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. Every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground his body lay Alive from the world of darkness stained Then burning forth in glorious day Up from the grave he rose again in his stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final death Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no sin of man Can ever pluck me from his hand Till I return or calls my name here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Here in the power of Christ we'll stand. You can be seated for the offering. As the grains of wheat once scattered on a hill were gathered into one to become our bread so may all your people all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you as this cup of blessing is shared within our midst 
May we share the presence of your love As the grains of wheat once gathered on a hill were gathered into one to become a bread so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you god of field and forest sea and sky you are the giver of all good things Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of Sarah and Abraham, inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministry. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us as one family of faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Remind us that from the beginning of creation, you knit together a world meant for harmony. Protect and restore the wasted places to joy and gladness, especially the areas devastated by wildfires, floods, hurricanes, and tornadoes. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Stir the leaders of nations and towns, militaries and courts to respond to your teachings. Let your call for justice reach all people and bring deliverance where there is oppression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength. Care for all who feel low. Keep safe any in the midst of trouble. Protect vulnerable people from harm and bring healing to all those afflicted in mind, body, or soul. Especially we pray this evening for those family and friends listed on our screen. Dave T., Mark T., Jordan L., and Andrew, the citizens of Ukraine and Eastern Europe, and for those serving in the military around the globe and those who have returned home. And at this time, we please pray for those on your heart, either aloud or silently. Dave, Mark, Jamie, Jane. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Encourage those who offer their gifts and talents in service to your church. Energize Pastor Tom the church council, worship leaders, Sunday school teachers, and youth leaders, greeters, and all who serve in our hospitality and outreach ministries, so they may be transformed in sharing your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all the saints, 
We know that death is overcome in Christ's resurrection, and we rejoice with faithful departed loved ones. Sustain us in hope until we too come at last to our heavenly home. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Jesus and his disciples had gathered in the upper room for the Passover meal a couple of times before, but this time it would be different. Jesus broke bread, gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Following supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the table. We'll come up to the rail and receive. Um, There's bread or gluten-free wafers, wine or lighter colored juice. Please come to the table. Seeds scattered and sown. The body of Christ. Wheat gathered and grown. Bread broken and shed as one. The living bread of God. Vine fruit of the land. Wine work of our hands. One cup that. Shared by all the living cup, the living bread of God. Is not the bread we break a sharing in the Lord? Is not the cup we bless the blood of Christ outpouring? Seeds scattered and sown, we gathered and grown, bread broken and shared as one, the living bread of God, wine fruit of the land, 
wine work of our hands one cup that is shared by all the living cup the living bread of God body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace Amen. Amen. Ministry moments. We have Sunday school kickoff, September 10th, not this coming weekend, the weekend after. We have a congregational meeting also on September 10th after service. Um, Memorial Patio Bricks. Um, patio is basically complete. We have a few more things we need to get, so uh, seating and uh, some landscaping that needs to be done. Uh, we reopened the brick pad uh, paper orders. Um, we'll take orders again through the end of September. So if you didn't get a chance last time uh, to place an order, uh, there's some uh, order forms on the table there, or you can always get this online on our website. Um, and then we will um, we'll be able to insert those new bricks into the existing pathway, and you can be part of uh, that whole memory pathway. So thank you. Okay, Steve. So, if you would like one of these fine t-shirts, or the updated version, with a St. Olaf on the back, you can register by the 9th, 8th, by the 9-8, I guess is the date deadline to have the um, our name put on the back. So, um, the information for registration is out there. If you'd like to donate, that would be fine also. We would like to get a group to walk or ride a bike or whatever, go out to walk uh, in Dousman or one of the locations. So so register or donate. In, in Truth and Advertising, the mission team will be donating to Outreach for Hope too. So, um, but anyway, it'd be nice to get together and have a walk and enjoy the food and the fresh air and so on. So think about it. Information is out there. And don't forget the t-shirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The uh, date for the blood drive in September is uh, undetermined, but our blood drive will be on September 21st, and it's a Thursday. Um, and once again, I'm going to offer anybody who's a new blood donor um, dozen cupcakes if they sign up to, do it, to do donate blood and show up. Whether you can awesome. donate or not doesn't matter, <laughs> and as long as you make the effort to sign up and show up, dozen cupcakes. Nice. Anyone else? Um, now, I know Pastor Tom sent out a video of Kyle Johnson. Um, Roger Johnson's son was over in Maui and uh, escaped the flames. Um, but uh, are we taking up a collection? Yes. For if, you, yeah. if you would like to donate uh, to the Lutheran Disaster Relief uh, for Maui, um, the ELCA does have an ongoing uh, program right now to specifically targeting Maui. Um, you can place um, any donation you'd like to give in, and hopefully there's a container out on the counter, um, and it'll go toward losing disaster relief for the Maui um, uh, wildfire. And Sing thanks for thanks for singing, by the way. I can hear you up here. It sounds pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Nobody else. Go ahead. Please rise. We'll join in our sending song, Your Grace is Enough, by Matt Marr. So God, you wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your Remember your children, remember your promise. 
is O God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your love and justice, God. You use it weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. Oh God, your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me, your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for oh, Heavens are reaching down on us. Your grace is enough for me. God, I sing your grace is enough. I'm covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.